Have you ever wondered how that vibrant green superfood spirulina is made? In this video, we'll take a look at the spirulina production. But did you know that spirulina is considered one of the most nutrient-dense foods on the planet? It's packed with protein, vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants, making it a favorite among health enthusiasts. And get this, spirulina has been consumed by humans for centuries, with roots tracing back to the Aztecs. Let's find out what goes into making this incredible superfood. Chapter The Rise of Spirulina Spirulina has seen a meteoric rise in popularity over the past few decades. Its nutrient-dense profile, boasting high levels of protein, vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants, has made it a sought-after superfood worldwide. But how did spirulina go from being an ancient alga to a modern health sensation? It all started with a renewed interest in natural and sustainable sources of nutrition. Spirulina's journey to the spotlight began in the 1940s and 1950s, when scientists rediscovered it in natural alkaline lakes in Africa and Central America. They were amazed by its high protein content and potential as a sustainable food source. By the 1970s, spirulina was being cultivated on a larger scale, and today it's produced in vast quantities to meet the global demand. But did you know that spirulina isn't just popular among health enthusiasts? It has also been recognized by NASA as a potential food for astronauts on long-term space missions due to its high nutritional value and ease of cultivation. Spirulina truly is a superfood that's out of this world. Chapter, the cultivation of spirulina. Spirulina is typically cultivated in controlled environments, such as open ponds or closed photobioreactors. These systems are designed to optimize the growth conditions for spirulina, ensuring it can thrive and produce high yields. In open ponds, spirulina is grown in shallow artificial bodies of water, where conditions such as temperature, pH, and nutrient levels are carefully regulated. These ponds are usually situated in sunny locations to maximize the amount of natural sunlight the spirulina receives. The water is kept in constant motion to prevent the algae from settling and to ensure even exposure to light and nutrients. Alternatively, closed photobioreactors offer a more controlled environment, shielding the spirulina culture from external contaminants and allowing for precise regulation of environmental factors such as light, temperature, and nutrient concentrations. These systems often utilize LED lighting to provide the optimal spectrum for photosynthesis, ensuring that the spirulina can grow efficiently. The cultivation process begins by inoculating the culture medium with a starter culture of spirulina. The starter culture contains the desired strain of spirulina and serves as the foundation for growth. Under favorable conditions, the spirulina cells multiply rapidly through photosynthesis utilizing carbon dioxide, sunlight, and nutrients, such as nitrogen, phosphorus, and trace minerals present in the culture medium. Chapter A, Harvesting Spirulina. Once the spirulina culture reaches a certain density, typically indicated by the color of the water turning dark green or blue green, it is ready for harvesting. Harvesting methods vary depending on the cultivation system used. In open ponds, a spirulina may be harvested using filtration systems or centrifugation to separate the biomass from the culture medium. In closed photobioreactors, harvesting may involve filtration or centrifugation within the reactor itself. After harvesting, the spirulina biomass is concentrated into a paste or slurry. The paste containing spirulina and water is passed through a special cloth with minute holes. This allows the water to pass through the small holes but spirulina is not small enough to go through them. This way, a large amount of water is removed from the solution. A worker continuously sweeps the cloth with a spatula and also applies a little pressure on it. This way, he makes way for more spirulina to fall on the cloth, while also ensuring that more water can be removed from the process. The spirulina paste becomes even denser, but the process won't stop until it is turned into a solid. The sweeping is done repeatedly, and then the paste is transferred to a bucket with the help of the spatula. Chapter, dehydration and drying. Different strategies are used to dehydrate the spirulina. 
one of which is to spread it on large tables. Due to a larger surface area, the paste loses water at a rapid rate, and it dries off sooner. While this strategy is useful, there is another method to remove the water. In the second method, the concept of pressure is used. The spirulina is kept in bags that allow water to seep out, but spirulina can't go through. Then they are pressed with high pressure, which makes water seep out, and the bags are left with dehydrated spirulina. After every single tiny drop of water has been squeezed out of the paste, it becomes a solid, brittle slab, but it is still not free from moisture trapped inside the spirulina. So the slab is broken down into smaller pieces, which are then fed into a cylinder-like device. This device allows pressure to change the slab of spirulina into noodle-like fragments. This gives the spirulina a large surface area, which makes the next step easier. The spirulina noodles are then transferred to several trays, which allow the superfood to dry off. Additional temperature management, or even specialized machines, may be used to ensure that the spirulina gets dried off evenly. By the time this process ends, the spirulina noodles become solid. Chapter 8. The final product. This is the finished product. Spirulina, rich in antioxidants and minerals, is ready after a tiring and tedious process of dehydration. The noodles like dried spirulina are broken down into smaller pieces by hand. Some manufacturers may even process it further to make tablets for easier consumption. This is done by pressing the broken down pieces with a large pressure using specialized machines. However, some people prefer to consume it as granules, and hence manufacturers sell it as granules as well. As the demand for spirulina continues to surge, numerous companies across the globe are stepping up their production, collectively generating a staggering 3,000 tons per year. Spirulina is marketed in various forms, including powders, capsules, tablets, and even as an ingredient in health drinks and snacks. Its versatility and health benefits have solidified its place in the health food industry. But the benefits of spirulina extend beyond its nutritional content. Spirulina farming is considered environmentally friendly. It uses less water and land compared to traditional agriculture, and it has a low carbon footprint. Furthermore, Spirulina can be grown in regions where conventional crops would struggle, providing a sustainable food source in areas facing food security challenges. Chapter and Conclusion The next time you add a spoonful of spirulina to your smoothie or take a spirulina tablet, take a moment to appreciate the journey it's taken to get to you. And don't forget to give a like and subscribe for more informative and entertaining videos like this one.